Aloha and welcome to the second interview episode of That Time I Got Arrested. I am so, so excited for you guys to hear this. This is one of my in real life, really good friends, homies, co-hosts. This dude is like inside and around my heart. He is just the best person and I honestly can't say enough good things about him. Um, but I'll start at the beginning. First of all, we host a mic together every Friday at Driftwood. Um, if you want to come, do your best. <laughs> and um, we also are buddies <laughs> that just like to text each other and hang out and be very supporting and loving. And he's great. And our interview is very interesting because he's a super fascinating, weird, complex, layered, intelligent, delightful, good, just so genuinely good. Such a good fucking person. You ever just like meet someone that's like entirely comprised out of goodness and they've had such a fucked up life that you're just like, how are you so great? Um, But they just are somehow and it's like oh adversity really does build character and isn't yours lovely that is how i would describe derek strong my guest on this episode you know i'm still learning how to interview and be like a host um i've been talking a lot but i'm trying to learn how to host and derek was such a great person to practice this with so uh, check him out on social media. You can find his Instagram at Derek Strongest. Um, he has a show coming out that he's producing called Midlife Crisis that's on March 9th. Please go see that. It's at the Playground Theater in Chicago. And you could check him out on Facebook or just anywhere around the city because he does comedy or come to our mic on Fridays. So Derek Strongest, the best man ever. <laughs> Also, while you're at it, while you're on your computer doing all that stuff, check out all these podcasts on my network. Kalina Ote, cringeworthy. She is lovely and wonderful and has such a disgusting podcast. It's a good break from whatever else the fuck you're doing today. And also, please check out Mike O'Keefe's Multiple Idiots podcast. His interviews are hilarious and weird. <laughs> So stay tuned and check everyone out. And do you have a podcast? Hey, do you want one? I mean, why not, right? I mean, what the fuck are you doing? You like podcasts, obviously, right? So check out Jazz Fest Studios. Um, they'll make all your podcasting dreams come true and literally couldn't do anything without them. So, you know, hats off. Hey, I just want to say shout out to the Illuminati for hitting me up on Instagram. Um so flattered and uh, intrigued by your offer, but I'm going to have to pass for now and um, just, you know, maybe hit me up when you're like a little bit more established, you know, and then we can talk. But um, thanks. Thanks for the offer. Uh, Hard pass. Thank you. Tell me what you think. Hit me up. Instagram. Facebook. That time I got arrested. Fucking what the fuck are you guys doing? I want to hear more. I love you. Tell me what you had for lunch. That's it. I love you. Listen to the episode. My name is B. Casper, and my entire life has been a lie. That's not even my real name. But don't worry. I'm going to tell you all of my secrets. This isn't the story of how I became an orphan. This isn't the story about how I jumped off a five-story building and survived. This isn't about how I died and came back funny. This is that time I got arrested. You know what? You said the nicest thing to me last Friday night. Like I have never felt more like seen. And it was, it was such like a, it doesn't make sense that this is why I feel this way, but maybe you'll understand why I feel this way. So when we were putting away the mic and stuff, like after on Friday, so um, Derek and I host a mic at Driftwood on Friday. Yeah, It's his mic and he agreed to put me on, um, I'm like a crazy person. So like, ooh, that's so cool. <laughs> um, and you looked at me. Best and you- decision I made about this <laughs> mic, by the way. Best. Thank oh, you. Epic level of decision making. Right there. Anyhow, go ahead. That's so sweet. I decided that every week I'm going to come up with five new rules. Yes, That I'm going to enforce, you do know. Um, so you looked at me and you were like, I, he's like, after we got done hosting, you said, I feel like I'm just starting to get to know you. 
you know? And like, what's so funny is like, we have talked so much. You yeah. have listened to every episode of the podcast. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome podcast. Amazing podcast. Thank what you. I to say? Like, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's so sweet. That's so cool. By the so way, cool. if anybody's listening to this, listen to the, listen to every episode of the podcast. It's not going to be, there are things that just won't make sense. It's a continuous thing. Anyway. Thank sorry. you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, so you were like, I'm just st- like, you know, you know so much about me, but I do feel like I'm kind of like an onion and I have like, like two sort of like bigger layers of like, there's the stuff that I'll sort of tell anyone, yeah, you know, and then there's like, and then there's the person that's behind that. Absolutely. You know, and like all of that stuff is like sort of like who I am and like, it's sort of like varied of like what level of like intimacy I'll like let someone get to. But I mean, obviously like Right now, it's like I'm putting it all out there. Of course, yeah. <laughs> like super understand. hard. But then so for you to be like, like, I see you that I'm like just starting to see you. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, because like, I, like you know, because like you said, you know, there's the public persona that you tell everybody. And again, people like you and me, we kind of share a little bit more about ourselves than other people do because it's like, okay, let me just set it up so that when you see me do something weird or out there, it'll make (laughs) some sense, right? Yeah, yeah. You have to like give everyone a little pregame because otherwise you just like, oh, that's like a mental person. Yeah, You know, like that's what you look like from far away. And it's like, yeah, no, totally. Yes, yes, that is me. I agree. Yes, (laughs) this is insane right here, but this here's why. And this is so you get that. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like setting up the rules of the game like you're like like your introduction is like okay so this is what you're in for okay <laughs> uh expect the unexpected mm-hmm. but like ha- what i meant when i was telling you that on friday it's like okay but now i kind of get her the i kind of get like where the logic is going to take it to next do you know what i mean <laughs> it's just like okay well if this is then this like oh, okay so it's natural she's going to come up with that so anyhow, yeah and it's cool it's like the more i hang out with you yeah the more i get to see oh wow okay I like when other people like figure me out because then I'm like, that helps me like learn more about myself. You okay, know? good. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I think that, that, that should help out. I would love if somebody was able to call out my stuff. Like, well, you know, the, I think naturally when people hang out with each other, they do, but it's just, I hate it when people don't get it at all and they try to figure it out. That's to me is the worst. I don't know if you've ever dealt with this. Like the boss that I had in my last job, she was just like, oh, well, I think when you say this, you really mean that. It's like, no, when I say that, that's exactly what I mean. Or, you know what I mean? Like people read into things and misread. It's just like, no, no, you have me completely wrong and I hate you and I wish you would die in a fire. (laughs) Well, it's shitty to feel misunderstood, you know, and everyone has a reason for everything. And all it really takes to understand someone is like a little bit of patience and like compassion, but that's sort of a tall order. And when you have a lot to explain about yourself, you know, you're either doing one of two things where I feel like you're faking it and you're pretending like everything's fine and you're just like grinding your teeth until the moment passes or you're sort of like slipping. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, it's just like a little bit of like you're crazy comes out in like whatever weird way. And that person is, doesn't really know like what's coming or why. And like, you could just sort of like do anything. And this is how I feel about myself. So I'm speaking very broadly here, but it's like, you do anything at any time and you could just be like, well, whoops. Yeah, (laughs) I know. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it could just be, I could just do anything. And like, that's like such a crazy, like weird thing to like, recognize about yourself, but I've like noticed a pattern in my life where I like look back and I'm like, I could literally blow this place up. (laughs) (laughs) And I would figure out in the moment how to justify it because it's like, well, I was upset. Yeah. You know? (laughs) I was upset. Yeah, exactly. Oh wait, it was Tuesday. That of course, naturally that's why that had to happen, you know? Yeah. That's why that building needed to burn. (laughs) I, I mean, I feel like a lot of buildings need to burn, but you know, yeah, it's true. like how, how well can you also like rein yourself in? And I mean, I well, haven't blown anything up like recently. Well, it's funny you should say that. I mean, that's like, I've had to live my life for, by very strict regimented sort of like ideas about, okay, well, if I do this, this is why I'm doing it. You know what I mean? It's like, cause I, if I let my mind go like, and and it'll take, it'll take me places. And I just like, no, I like in order to function within society, you need to do this. And this may take a little longer than other people, but yeah, I've 
become very regimented in terms of my thoughts and my actions and just having that insight all the time. You know, it's just, it's a pain. So. Well, you do a killer job at it. Though. Oh, thank you. Because I think you're like super nice and cool. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, I mean, I literally hate everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not if you're listening and like we're homies and like I love a lot of people, but I've come to find within myself where I was kind of like this like uber hippie yeah. for like a, like a little too long. And then, and then I went to prison and then I like learned what life was really about. You I was going mean? to say, that's got to be a rough transition right there. Cause there is very little gray in that. Well, that was just no, I got my spirit broken. Like yeah, heart. I was going to say, like that's. <laughs> well, and I've never uh, been the same. Everybody and <laughs> hugs and holds hands to just like, no, if you hug and holds hands here, there's rules behind, uh, that can mean something. Well, yeah. now I feel like I've done enough self damage that I've like come to the realization where I'm like, no, I need to like work on myself and like employ compassionate distance Ooh, where it's like, like you know, not everyone is for you. Not everyone is like good for you. And like to be more selective of like who you have at your table and just like choose people that are good to you and good for you. Yeah. And then also be good to those people instead of just having this broad, like, no, be good to everyone as much as you can all the time, which can be like dangerous, you know? Absolutely. Because I like, I have that problem where I'm just like, oh, I just want to be so good to everyone all the time. But then you have nothing left. And then there are some people that don't, don't deserve it, you know? And then it's like a waste. And then the people that do deserve it get less because you're not like, you know, like spreading your time out correctly. Absolutely. It's uh, like focused caring, I guess. Yeah. Or, yeah. Focused compassion, you know? Again, especially given like, you know, your past, my past, you know, that there's, you know, something that always comes up as boundary issues. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, you know, and especially having like the background of being a hippie. Oh my God, you were a hippie. Like you're, <laughs> you're supposed to, lo you're, you love the planet and you love every living creature, you know, in yeah, the planet. Yeah. So yeah, I could understand how having that and being able to like, no, 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 now I can't give to everything. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So now I have this like separation where I really have to be so careful about how I choose. And like, I still give freely to people I don't like. Like sometimes, yeah. but I do it in like measured Completely doses, yeah, you know, course. and then I can like sort of like compartmentalize like that need and foster that like need to nurture, but then also I'm still like protecting myself and like feeling good. But so that is a really long winded way of me saying that like, you're one of the very few people that I feel like is deserving of my like oh, infinite kindness. <laughs> I thank you. And I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, like it's a gift and like, I love you yeah. and like, you're so wonderful. And like, I'm just just so happy we met. Like, I really hate doing comedy sometimes because I have... Oh my God, it's so draining, isn't it? Just being around people and their <laughs> shit. Well, I mean, I have so many negative experiences with comedians yeah. that it's like they fought they far outweigh the good. But then it's like I meet people like you that are so good that I'm just like, okay, there is like there is a purpose behind this. You sort of have to like you know, like Little oases is in the desert, you know? Well, I was thinking of like Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> you know? Like the end of that movie. Way better analogy. Yeah, yeah just sort of like you got to like sort of like go through all this like darkness to like have this like cleansing, like healing, happy experience at the end. And that's what I feel like my friendship with you is. So, uh, Oh, well, thank you. Just to introduce Mutual, everyone. by the way. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> to you. Um, this is Derek, Derek Strong. He is a comedian extraordinaire, um, also extraordinaire. just like a, a oh. super cool human being. Thank um, you. Yeah. Um, we met online wait <laughs> <laughs> we met online yeah, it was, not in like a weird way but how yeah, did we you meet know though? craigslist hookups you know <laughs> they, it doesn't exist anymore we found a way um no how did we meet um it was oh well i saw you post about the podcast and oh, word. you said that you wanted to have guests and uh, emailed and then you're like yeah absolutely and you know just when was the first time we actually like met, met, met? And, and oh, that was at your place for the <gasps> pre-interview. No way. Yeah. No, actually, no. I I'm pretty sure I gave you a ride after Power Hour like eight months ago. How was that possible? Yeah, we went from um we drove in my uh, my used secondhand BMW SUV. We, oh my God, that was you! Yeah, we drove from Gallery to Durkin's. Yes. Yeah. And we just like 
Yeah, that was it. I completely forgot who that person was because I like I didn't see you no, after no, that. When, so. No, when you when you came to my place, I was like, oh, I remember you. Wow. <laughs> That is impressive. Like I, uh, now I feel terrible. I no, no, like, no, no, no. Kn- People are always surprised at how good my memory is considering how much yeah, pot I smoke. I was going to say, you're, yeah. you're, you're next level when it comes to that, which by the way. I'm like I, really smart. By the way, I, well, yes, you are very smart. <laughs> um, no, but that's one thing I want to point out that that's an issue that I have with the comedy community at large. And that just shows you what a great person you are. Cause I don't like the fact that all these kids are just blowing their brains out with every single substance known to man. Like, I've learned about so many drugs doing comedy in Chicago that I never heard of before. Like, you guys were talking about Well, DMT. to be fair, I was just going to say, we, we, my producer and I were just having a very serious conversation about DMT, like, yeah, 30 minutes ago. Yeah, I was just going to say, I was just going to say, like, when I found out there's yet another drug that you could smoke out of a crack pipe, I'm like, wow. I know it looks bad, but it's honestly so Oh, beautiful. Listen, between, <laughs> between you and me, if it's something that needs to be smoked out of a crack pipe, people probably shouldn't be smoking it. I well, mean, that's my... I cr- it, crack pipe has um, bad connotations. It's it actually called a, a demo. A chalet. Oh, a chalet. Wow. That, <laughs> oh, my God. How do you clean it? How do you clean up that pile of dog shit and you call it a chalet? That's, that's what, how you do it. That's, that's what people a, who smoke DMT call it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, or, or I mean, you could just call it a stem. You know? A stem, yeah. I've known it as a stem or a demo from when I was homeless with the uh, the crackhead community that I knew back then. They called it a stem or a demo. No, like so. the super heady, like like heady people call it like chalet. Chalet. Yeah. Wow. To smoke deems. That's out. like pigeon and squab. That's what that's <laughs> like. Yeah, that's exactly pigeon and squab. There that's you go. That's exactly what it is. That's so Man. funny. So... Yeah. You came over for dinner, and then amazing dinner. No, let's 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 talk about the grass fed beef that you served me. <laughs> let's not talk. Let's not. Dinner is me eating mac and cheese in my house by myself. Like right, because no, you don't have a stove. That's right, because I don't have a stove. And you were like, "No, I will cook you meat." And I came over, and there were meat cooked in various different ways <laughs> in a big old pile of it. Well, I didn't know what, what temperature you liked it at, and I could have just asked, but then I also just decided to make every style, which was uh, and all that was good. Like there was no part of that steak that was bad. So yeah, we had this amazing meal. I gave you my life story, yeah. my rather twisted one. I and listened to your podcast. You listened to my in- <laughs> IRL podcast while you were cooking. Yeah, and, it was yeah. great. I loved it. I like. So, I was like told you to like sit down and like just get out of my way. And then- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was that was great. But, I really like cooking for people. It's like a it. It reminds me of my grandmother. Uh, who is not a nice or cool person, but like, the one, <laughs> but no, she like, she's like kind of scary and like evil. So like yeah. maybe that's where I get it from a little bit, <laughs> but like the one thing she would do. Wait, that was you scary and evil. That was like the nicest scary evil. And it was just like, oh no, just please sit down. I'll, I'll go. No, over no, no. I mean make... like, like Friday night at the mic was me like being scary and evil. Loved it. <laughs> Loved it. Oh my God. But then like, you People know, I also. were genuinely intimidated. I was just like, this is what I need here. This is perfect. Well, and then, but I'll also like have someone over for dinner and then like like make them a nice meal but so she's like like super scary but the one thing she'd always do is like sit you down and like have you very very well fed you know yeah, and so okay. I don't mind being scary but I will also like feed you very well no, like that's the balance you yeah know? it's just like no no we're you're you'll be comfortable you'll be terrified but yeah. comfortable it's yeah no no, just, no it's well okay. it's like don't fuck with me yeah but like sit down and enjoy this <laughs> <laughs> that's good it was good. Well, you pulled it off with a plum. Thank you. Well, we got to know each other super well. Yes. Now we're besties. Now we're besties, of course. And now you're on my podcast. Now I'm on the podcast. You're amazing. That's yeah, good. So yeah, where do you want to? How do you want to dive into this can of worms? The Derek Strong my partial life story leading to my arrest in Yonkers, New York. Well, how do you want to dive into it? Okay. Well, I don't know. You're the captain. I'm not the captain. This is your ship. No, I'm the skipper. Today, I'm the skipper. Captain. Um, I'm your skipper. All right. Uh, a brief preface it would be, uh, you know, had, had kind of a, a screwed up, awkward childhood. I know poor me would let's all cry about no, that. No, no, no. But honestly, you did have like a fucked up childhood. Was, you told it to me. You don't have to tell everyone yeah. else because I don't fucking care about that. Yeah, I know you don't care about it. But, you, but I know. Yeah, you know. I know. A, and I think that you're wonderful. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I was a, That's was how a, I feel about that. It was a unique one. I, I you know, I definitely... Definitely. You know what it was? It was because of the extremes. You know, it's like I was I had money when I was a kid. My family had money when I was a kid. But I had to deal with a litany of 
other bullshit that yeah, you know, money most, doesn't solve problems. Money, money doesn't <laughs> solve problems, apparently. It only makes it more complicated, if anything. It did, and then what made it more complicated than that was watching it go bye bye. By the time I was age ten, we were broke, so you know, I was. Uh, That's even harder though to yeah. go from like that extreme of being like we're gonna throw money at your problems to like now it's just like well good well, luck yeah exactly <laughs> that's that's that didn't that didn't make for a well balanced person so because of that and actually that is a good segue into um the rest of the stuff so because of that and you know having um having had mental health issues since i was about four years old and you know and i'm not, I'm not talking about like you know oh he has add no, no no we were you know we were doing serious psych stuff then you know taking you know small little handfuls of medication uh, that's so tough because it's like you don't even get to figure out who you are at the age when it's like the most important because you're like heavily medicated. Yeah. You know? And it's, you know, you know, you deal with all the stuff that goes along with it. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, going yeah. in and out of therapy and having to explain. I mean, you know, I'm, you know, having to take all the tests that you have to take. It's just How do you that trust are anyone school. ever, honestly, I don't. after I'll all be, that? I'll, I'll be 100% honest with you. I don't. I know that's why I kind of do the whole my life is an open book kind of thing because it's just like, listen, I, you know, I'm probably not going to be seeing anybody that I talk to now three months from now. That's like my, mm, you know, yeah, that's how I, I really that's, go about that's life. That's tough, though, when people are disposable, because I feel like you can for me, I've like lived a life where everyone sort of disappears. Yeah. And it's like I feel really lonely a lot. Oh, yeah. So like deeply, like metaphysically lonely. Yeah. I was this <laughs> happened to me like, oh, a couple of weeks ago where I just was just like, oh, my God, even when I die, I'm going to be alone. Like I'm just going to be this lonely thing. And it was like that deep down, no. like universal, like I'm alone. I'm alone in this. It that's not what death feels like. Yeah. That's not what death feels like. Well, you know. I well, mean, I know, yeah, I know, I know, but I'm going to yeah. tell you. I, I mean, it, you, it's hard for anyone to believe me when yeah. I talk about it. So I don't really like to talk about it because it's like, if you're not going to understand like how deeply I know this, yeah. then I uh, get frustrated. But I'm telling you that like, you don't feel lonely when you're dead. Oh, well, that's oddly reassuring. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I, was, I mean, uh, that's probably the only time you'll ever not feel this. That's like being lonely is a very human experience because we're separated right now. We're like stuck inside of our bodies yeah. and our souls. And we're are, limited by our own senses. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Our so. souls are basically trapped in this vessel, you know, and like our, this vessel is here to like teach us something. Yeah. But then at the same time, it's like, man, those lessons are painful. Yes. They, <laughs> ooh, they, they can be. Yeah. And like the one of the biggest ones that we have to cope with is this feeling of separateness. And yeah. Like it's, it hurts. It does. I get really lonely. I'm, I don't know about you, but like the, the time of day that I get the most lonely and I figured it out like why yeah. and everything is like between five and 9 p.m. Wow. Okay. I get like. I want to jump off a bridge lonely. Wow. Okay. Because that I think that's like dinner time. Oh. And I never like had that. You know what I mean? And like the on, only times of my life where I remember feeling like safe and like really happy is when I was in a situation where, and like not including prison, but in a situation where I like had dinner with oh, okay. someone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like, in boarding school or like in college, you know, when I had like dinners yeah. specifically with other people, that's like those time in my life when I feel, when I felt like the safest and the most like well put together mentally. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're there connecting with other people and there's all, all, all sorts of studies that are done about bonding over food and that's a, you know, yeah. a big thing. And I think that's kind of why I started this little like renegade, like, are you broken? Then come to my house for dinner. You know? <laughs> that kind of like, sense, like, yeah. like a reverse, like Hansel and Gretel witch, you know, yeah. I'm just like lure, luring people in to like ease my loneliness. <laughs> Completely get it. With yeah, delicious totally. food. You know? I love it. Yeah. Just, just come here. Come here, children. I know. I'm just like, I want to have people over for dinner every night. Like, that's how I feel. About that's awesome. Life. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, that's at least you're turning that negative into a positive, you know, that, yeah, maybe that I whole, get that, a you're crushing life, loneliness. That, all right. <laughs> Well, you're a comedian. You have a life. No, we don't. No, no comic has a life. That's why they're doing it. That's, yeah. that's why they're doing it. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Well, I don't really like doing it. I don't really feel like I do it. Yeah. I'm. I, it's like so distant to me right now. It's like I have the open mic and it's just more of an obligation now. You know, now that you're on board, though, it, it actually feels a lot better. I'm going to see it. Roz is coming tomorrow. So we're going to, you know. It's going to be so fun yeah. just to have a reason to like 
hang out and like, you don't drink, right? No. No, but I am going to drink. Oh, really? Which okay. I don't normally do. But oh, this I, should be interesting. But I, just... I feel like in this situation, like I have nothing to fear. I'm not doing any time. I just get to be mean to people I don't like. Yeah. And like exert the smallest amount of power. Yeah. Like in a crazy way over people I don't like. Because for the last like year and a half, I've just had like so many fucking rude assholes be like mean and awful to me at yeah. other open mics. And instead of just being like, oh, I'm better than that. I'm like, no, no, no I'm going to be the worst one. I want you to be <laughs> the worst one. That's what I want. I want people to see you come to the mic for your turn at hosting. And I want them to be like, oh, shit. I want everyone to leave. Yeah. <laughs> It's great. No, but I think that it would be really funny if like what that mic ended up turning into was like when I'm there, it's like a lot of ladies because yeah. they, they feel really supported. <laughs> yeah, like I was talking to somebody about this before. I know that, you know, you know, women comics hate this and I'm going to stop doing it. But me going up to them and saying, thank you for coming to the mic. You know, I hate, you know, just seeing guys up here and, you know, thanks for the diversity aspect. Like. Female comics hate that. Here's why? the thing. I, well, because it's kind of like, well, why don't you just appreciate me for being a comic as opposed to being a female comic, which I completely get. No, but there's not enough female comics. That's what I'm though. saying. Like, I mean, come on. I have one, maybe two that come on a regular basis to my mic. It's just like, I don't want to hear the same things by the same people over and over again. Like, this is a different voice to me. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. And there's like a lot. Of, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of, you know straight male comics that sound different enough from each other, but there's so many that sound exactly Do the they same. Know? <laughs> yeah, there are. I mean, there's a few that are just, they're fairly unique. Like, you know, uh, yeah, I can name a few. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you're not at all jaded. I mean, you're jaded enough to be a comic. You're probably not jaded enough to be a person, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm like too jaded. I, I got my feelings hurt like a yeah. bunch of times already. So now I'm just kind of so like tough with comedy. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, I maybe I was like too soft, you know, Yeah. like coming into it. And I didn't really expect everyone to be like mean, you know, yeah. so yeah. And apparently, like, this is, like, the way comedy was, like, 10 years ago and the way the scene was 10 years ago. Because I, you know, talked to a lot of old timers, like, it was way meaner and darker back then. Wow, that's funny. Yeah, like, you know, when people, like, it's like, oh, I'm at my, I'm at my first open mic for the first time. And we give them all a round of applause. Like, you got no support for saying that. You would actually have, like, a veteran take you off the stage when you were done and be like this. Yeah, don't ever tell anybody that. Ever. <laughs> like, don't ever say that. So. Aww. That's shitty. I yeah, now I, know. I feel like people just like salivate when they hear it because they're like, let's see how fucking bad this is going to yeah. be. <laughs> you know, it's like they are supportive maybe if only for like wrong reasons though, you know. Absolutely. Well, one of my reasons for wanting to start Open Mic is that I like seeing people find their voice, you know, which is why I have the idea in my head, hey, I want people to say whatever the fuck comes into their mind here. Yeah. Okay? I don't care how terrible train wrecky you know, what established thing that they're saying that's supposed to be, you know, some taboo thing that they're not supposed to say. No, say it. And then at least you don't have it in your chest anymore. Because what if that person comes up with like, oh, well, uh, and I could say this, by the way. Okay, I can. And you know, I can. And you, I'm not going to say why, but you know, I can say why. <laughs> but say they have like a, a, a joke about child rape, right? Mm -hmm. Which is supposedly a taboo. Right. You're not supposed to be able to go there. But say that that joke that they come up with for that leads to, I don't know, eventually world peace. <laughs> they they were able to get to that joke at my open mic. That's the way I feel about it. That's why I want people to feel free to say and do whatever joke comes to their mind. So as long as they're not attacking a person in the room in particular. That's, you know, that That's goes out That's kind of what saying. all my jokes are, though. Yeah, but you're allowed to do that. I told you, you have carte blanche. You know, you can do whatever the fuck you want in my mic. It's your mic, too. So. Okay. Well, yeah, no, you know what? And, like, I love that so much because I love the idea of that. And I think that there is this sort of, like, censorship culture now yeah. where it's, like, you can't you can't control what someone's going to say. Like, even if it's bad, like let the silence of the room be the punishment. Yes. Of that. Thank you know what I you. mean? Yeah. Like, like the you, crowd will hang them. Trust right, me. Right. Yeah, like, but it, like, if you say something crazy and like, it's so crazy, it's funny. And, yes. And you have that little like spark of like gold or like you have that realization of like, Oh, like this works because it's like so bad. Yeah. And like, I feel like most of my jokes are that way. You know, like you know, I've never seen you perform. Um, you definitely have, but that's okay. 
I really <laughs> don't. Not that how memorable. is that possible? Because well, we were... that night, that night when you took me to Durkin's, I I think I skipped out because I was just like, oh, I don't want to stay here. Yeah, no, but we were time. at Gallery together, and I we, we actually you remember Five Star. Yeah, I remember Five Star. Have I seen you at Five Star? Yeah, yeah, I used to go there a bunch. Okay, I did go to when Five I first Star started. All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And me, I mean, I, just... I like know your jokes. That's how many times I've seen you. I, now I feel like a terrible <laughs> human being. I mean, well, no, it's I mean, fine. No. I mean, like, I, maybe I just like wasn't that memorable, or maybe you went up before me a lot, and then, uh, you know, because uh, when you're uh, new, you go last. You oh, know, no, like, okay, so my memory doesn't work the way it's supposed to, and it's not from like drugs or anything. It's just like I. All right, I'll give you a perfect example. Right now, you and I are having a conversation, right? We are. Yeah, well, sort of. I mean, we're we're on a podcast. Oh my god, that's right, we're recording. Anyhow, <laughs> fuck it. Um, you and I are having a conversation, so my entire focus is about the conversation, moment to moment. Okay, if I leave right now and come back, you could have mentioned something five minutes ago and said, "Hey, do you remember when we just talked about that?" No, I'll remember it three weeks from now, though, randomly. Like, I, yeah, it's <laughs> fucking freak when it comes to that. I yeah. mean, it's fine. Like, your hippocampus is weird. It is weird. You know, my own hippocampus. That damn hippocampus. Right. Like, that's yeah, fucking, I know. What the fuck is that what's shit doing? Wrong with my hippocampus? I need to get that looked at. How do I, how do I get that explored? <laughs> hippocampus. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, so we're best friends. Now we're best friends. And of we all host time, a mic together. Time. We host the mic together. Um, this is actually, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. This actually makes me kind of want to do my own podcast. Just doing this. this hey. is, yeah, I know. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're in a den O podcast. I like fully support that. I would listen to it and I would Thank like you. get on, on all the way board. Well, you know me, I pimp the hell out of your podcast. I tell people about it all the time. I'm like, listen, I know you don't <laughs> like podcasts. Listen to the first, listen to the prologue if you're not instantly hooked by that then i don't know you're not a person then uh, you should <laughs> only nine percent of people listen to podcasts yeah well you know the, the, we want one of those percents listening to your podcast that'd okay? be so tight yeah that would be a <laughs> lot of people you know, you know podcast is a new medium you know that's the, the you, know, you should be able to explore hey with, man if joe rogan could do it that's right joe rogan i could be the female joe rogan you should you should be the female he's my joe real dad rogan. i know he's your real dad <laughs> People don't know this about you. Like, they know. Yeah. We got to get that DNA test. You really got to do this. You know what? Yeah, just send it. Be like, listen, Joe, come on. What are we going to do? When, when, when are we sending that in? When are we going on Maury? Does Maury still do that? Um, We should find out. Yeah, we Aaron? should find out. <laughs> Yeah, let's find out if Maury Povich just... My information uh, officer will get back to us I like when... My favorite, of course, and this is everybody's favorite, when the possible guys are like, they number in almost the double digits. There's like eight potential dads for the kid. Like, I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) Like, whoa. Yeah, he's still still in business. Oh, he's still in business. Yeah, Maury and Joe Rogan and I need to get together. Exactly, yeah. You got to cook them a beautiful steak dinner. We know Joe Rogan eats, you know, he hunts. Hello. Yeah, I was going to say. We have more in common than you'd think. There you go, yeah. That was amazing. I was just like, she's going to cook steak, but she does mention being a hippie a lot. This is going to be interesting. I was a vegan for a long time. Yeah, I know. You remember you telling me that? Like, oh, man, we're going to have some soy steak. With meat, with red meat specifically. I like need it at least like once or twice a month. That's good. And then I feel like alive. Yeah, of course. (laughs) By the way, two vegans out there, humans are omnivores. I hate to be the one to break it to you. We are designed to eat everything. Everyone's physiology is different and it really has a lot to do with like your genes and like where do you come from? Like where is your tribe from? So you're saying there's people who are naturally more inclined to be able to be vegans, you're saying? Yeah, totally. They need like a that. like a high fiber, like high glucose diet, like works better for some people. Like or high carb, like low fat works that better. That kind of makes a lot of and sense. some people work better on like higher fat, you know? So what if, you know, your diet consists of ninety six percent ramen, cheese and, you know, you binge out on White Castle whenever you get a chance. What, what, you're what, definitely what? gonna get some sort of gastrointestinal okay. like Irritation or I should have like made disease. plans for after sixty, right? Like that. I mean, I would say like IBS or celiac or um like like stomach cancer. Oh wow! Okay, good. One, one of those well, three. That, that's messed up because my dad actually had uh, had colon cancer. He had yeah, to get his colon totally. resected. So I'm pretty. Did he sure have I a bad a diet? Not 
too terrible. I mean, he wasn't definitely not like me. He wasn't just like this. Oh, how many things can I, how many sandwiches in McDonald's menu could I fit together to make a super sandwich? No, he wasn't like that, but he, uh. <laughs> That's like a form of abuse, though. It really is. You know it's the I mean? best kind of abuse. I know. I need you to come over for dinner every night. <laughs> Good. I have like a green smoothie right here I, that I want to give I, you some of. When you pulled that out, I was just like, is that, is, is that a plant? Like, I didn't think it was plant food. I thought like you were growing something in a mason jar. And I didn't know what the hell that <laughs> no, was. No, it's, it's just spinach, way too green. Spinach and avocado and bananas and um. Like if I took a sip of that, I would literally shit myself. Like no. I don't, my body and is like not fruit, used to that level of flax green. Seed, hemp seed, wow. pumpkin seed butter. So, somebody wants to live healthy until their forties, man. That's good. I mean, I think it's like like balance. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I definitely eat fried chicken. Like okay, twice yeah. a week, but oh, I wow. but I try and drink a green smoothie like every day. Okay, that's good. So you're trying to at least you know. And I eat a lot of I eat a lot of salads and. Yeah, I noticed that you did have vegetables. a salad dinner. Okay, that's, yeah. Your 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 health game is is good. <laughs> <laughs> it's strong. It's strong. The strong style open mic guys, driftwood. <laughs> six o'clock sign up, six thirty mic every Fridays. <laughs> You'll see me. West Montrose. You'll see me there. I'll maybe I might make a laugh. You know, uh, you're very leading funny. the show. Oh well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. You yeah, know? you're funny and cool and nice. Oh, and I like you. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, the, <laughs> the feeling's mutual, and I also like the random wild card factor. That <laughs> I, we, I think comedy needs more of that. I think people forgot that that's an art. You know. <laughs> It is. It's an art to be crazy. It's an art to be crazy <laughs> and to be publicly crazy, oh, too. Oh, man. I've been waiting for someone to tell me that my whole life. What, that there's a, yeah, like this is this is what, what art is. Yeah, what, what you do is art. Is art. <laughs> Instead of being like, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Literally, you know what I mean? literally walking to a microphone, saying 10 words and four comedians walking out in unison. That is art. I'm sorry. That is art. After they've been there for an hour. I like am they've proud already of myself. That. You should I just pat yourself on the back. Yeah. That was impressive. Yeah, fuck everyone. And by the way, yeah, that's the way I feel about my mic, too. If it ends next week, if there's... Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure there's going to be like five people there tomorrow, and good. That's what I want. I want <laughs> 10 comics. I want the diehards. That's who I want. I want... Everyone fucking, gets 20 minutes. <laughs> everybody gets 20 minutes. You know, <laughs> say what you want. And I know you didn't like them playing darts during there, but I, I love that. I Why? love that because they knew, because they talked about it at a time. Like, I want that level of creativity and freedom. Like, I. Wait, what do you mean? How is that creative? Because they did, they played an actual game of legitimate darts yes. during Ben Gerber's set. Ooh. Yes, that's so rude. No, but he knew about it. He right. wanted that to happen. Sure. Like, yes, yeah, so that's what I liked about it. It was just like, oh yeah, this is this is the wackiness of what I've. I hated it. I thought it was distracting. Uh, well, yeah, I think that at that point, well, you saw Dead the Room was at that point. I think they were just like, let's just do it. Didn't whatever. matter. Yeah. 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 But, well, well yeah. that's okay. We don't have to agree on everything. We don't have to agree on everything. That's fine. So that's tell fine. me about that time you got arrested. Okay. So about the time I got arrested. So as I mentioned before, crazy ass childhood didn't lead to me being well adjusted. Family got poor, blah, blah, blah. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Uh, Circling back. <laughs> ended up basically going to what was akin to uh, jail for kids when I was in high school. Uh, big surprise there. Was uh, it like a group home or like a home for? What? It was a group. Well, if, if like you were good. It, it, no, if you were. So it was a home for. It was a home. It was a school for a mostly disturbed children. And then if you were good enough, you got to go to the group home portion of it. What do you mean the group home? So it was like a, like a legit a, jail, kind of. Yeah, like, like we had locks on our windows. Yeah. And we had uh, what were called ODs. They were officers of discipline. Oh, and their yeah. job was if, you know, you started acting out or bugging out or going crazy, they would tackle you and give you a shot of Thorazine and bring you to the infirmary. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I know all about those Thorazine shots. Oh, man. Ooh, Thorazine. I've never gotten one personally, but I have borne witness to them by ex she i saw her get tackled three times by you know a 250 pound linebacker looking dude because she would just flip out and just yeah she would get the shot in the ass and just start drooling and that's they, traumatizing to oh watch my god that. oh man if i told you about 
the my first dating experiences was in that school, and every single one of them were just. That's why when people ask, my girlfriend's crazy, I'm like, dude, you have no idea what the fuck crazy <laughs> is. You don't know what crazy is. I know what legit crazy yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, well, I feel she, that way too. I'm like, no, I'm normal. You yeah, don't understand. Like, you don't get it. Like, there's a spectrum here that you are not fully appreciating, my man. This is. She took your phone, and now she's wondering who's this girl you're texting, and it turns out to be your sister. That ain't crazy. That's neurotic. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what crazy is. So, yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. I so understand girl, why you're my people. <laughs> yeah. My first girlfriend, if she did not take a shower three times a day minimum, she would take five. If she didn't take a minimum of three, she would try to commit suicide. She had OCD. Oh, she had real OCD, not yeah. neat freak OCD. Right, you yeah. know, I like things straight. No, no, no. She literally needed to do it. She was, uh, you know, yeah. So that was uh, that was girlfriend number one. That was that's how I deep dive into the crazy. So um, uh, let's see. So I went to that school and I met a gentleman here. And the reason why I'm starting with high school before this happens because I've met a gentleman there who I was very cool with um, and. I was friends with him for the entire time of school. And if you looked at him, you looked at me, you wouldn't expect he and I to be friends. He was very, he was very thugged out looking. You know what I mean? You know, he's, you know, everybody in that school, we all listened to like, you know, it was the nineties. We all listened to, you know, you know, the hip hop music of the era. And he, you know, he was very much about that scene. You know, he's from Yonkers, New York, or actually he was from Mount Vernon, but uh, he later moved to Yonkers, New York. Um, you know, but he and I were very cool. Right. Um, yeah. Fast forward a couple of years. Uh, things clearly, and this happened with a lot of kids from the school, big surprise. Things took a turn. I ended up being homeless, right? Oh my God. So I was homeless for, at that point, um, I was homeless for about two months, right? And when I mean homeless, like- How old were you? This, I was uh, eight, 19. Damn. All right. So- um, That's so young. Oh yeah. It's a- uh, yeah, it's, a, you know, I had just broken the threshold because there's this place called Covenant House, which if you're under 18, you go there and you can get support. From the so school? From, uh, no, this is just a separate uh, separate entity within New York City. Uh, it was right near the Port Authority, conveniently, because that's where a lot of runaways would, you know, get off the bus and, you know, they would end up going there. And that was for if you were under God, 18. That's so and homeless. Sad. Oh, yeah, it's brutal. Um that's where, you know, so, but I broke that threshold. I was over 18, so I couldn't stay there and, you know, get housing or any of that. And I was fucking gone psychologically, just out there, right? Were you still medicated at this point? No, not when I was homeless. Um, matter of fact, while the whole time that I was at that school, I was one of the only kids who wasn't taking medication. They just had me doing all the therapy and all that other stuff. Um, so when I was 18, I had a psychotic breakdown. Uh, and that led to me, uh, my first hospitalization, suicide attempt. Then I went on a bunch of medications, which definitely made things worse. Cause, and during that, by the way, during that age, this is something that's a fact about psychology. Your synapses and everything in your brain, it's not settled yet. So if you start getting diagnosed no. at age 15, between ages 15 and 27, 28 yeah. years old. 27 is when your brain stops developing. Yeah, so it's, you're going to, you may get up to 10 different diagnoses. I had seven by the time they settled on what I eventually had. So it was like, there's, it's like, there. I hate the whole mental health system. That's a whole other can of worms DSM right there. can't really like define a human being, you know? It can't. And it's, it's like. It's just they, like a helpful I mean, I wouldn't even call it helpful. I wouldn't even helpful. call it helpful. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't. But I, it's just like, a, it's just a cater, categorization. It is a categorization tool. And it's it's designed literally to, you know, to help feed the need of the beast of the, you know, the pharmaco the, uh, yeah, pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, I feel companies. like that's what yeah. it is more than anything. It's, it's not even like door. about so much like getting better, but yeah. it's like, let's pacify this like problem yeah with like your insurance and some pills that's really what it is it's uh you know it's like i it, hate that it's like yeah you don't cure the disease no you, you treat it for as you long as you treat the can. symptoms yeah you treat the symptoms right and it's a revolving door like i've seen all manner of that system and it's just you know at some point like i don't take any psych medicines now i don't that's amazing yeah it's that's not the most fun way to live but i'd rather no that but i than, think that it's like brave and difficult uh, and it's like Hard, By the way, hard, I don't harder. suggest if you are taking psych medicines and you want to go off of it, I don't suggest <laughs> doing it. Oh, my God. Not because I'm trying to cover my ass, but like 
you really, 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 really have to think about that before you do it. Like you really have to weigh your options and your, the level of insight and therapy that you need to back it up is insane. Okay. Nah, it's, do it. Yeah. You, yeah <laughs> there you go. Well, you heard it from me. She, uh, she told you that. So, uh, yeah. No, nah, I mean, fuck it. Just like eat healthy though. Well, if you I, absolutely, I, mean, I feel like there's so a, many other portions to this, like that, I, and I think are don't get addressed. But yeah, like sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I just feel like a lot of mental health stuff can be solved with nutrition. Yeah, and that it's really difficult. Exercise for, too. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult for people to accept that because it's actually a lot harder yeah. than taking a pill and having your symptoms go away. Which is crazy too, because the stuff that the pills are doing to you is yeah. so much. It's so. I know a person that uh, he was taking. Like, Lithium, like they basically forced him to take lithium. He had an adverse reaction to it. It, it the muscles in his tongue contorted to the point permanently. Now he has to take he has to have a speech therapist for the rest of his life. He could barely understand what he's saying. Oh my god! It's hard of dyskinesia, guys. Look it up. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, not a fun one. Okay, so I'm a crazy kid. You're 19. Psy- 19, psychotic breakdown. You poor thing. I wish yeah. you could have just come to my place. No, I would. I would have. I would have burned the bridge. I, I was in no place to be like around I know, people. But still, I just like. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't there. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's so it's sweet. so weird. That but is like, so sweet. I feel that though. So, but I'm sorry. Continue. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I had to. De- I had to go through that at that point in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, um, and the reason why I was homeless and what led to me, you know, having a psychotic, well, right after the psychotic breakdown, I had gotten into a physical altercation with my brother that led to me getting arrested for the first time. He pressed charge against me and justifiably so I nearly killed him. Um, and so, well, he's alive now though, right? Well, he's alive now. <laughs> I, I love him. I, you know, if anything happened to him now, believe me, that fucking, oh, man, huh? well now I'm guess I'm flying to New York and I got to <laughs> fucking change my life now because somebody's fucking paying for it anyway. So, um, so that happened. Um, and one of the things was that I had to go get counseling, get put on the psych medication, stuff like that. So the heavy duty shit. Um, and, uh, my family at the time had become homeless as well. So it wasn't just me. It was just they couldn't really support me. They couldn't really support themselves. And I, of course, was, you know, the dead weight on the sinking ship. You know, I was barely functioning. They're like, listen, you know, you're not contributing at all. You know, so I was out there. I was homeless. And, uh... And I had this assault charge that got, you know, because I did the counseling. I took the medication. I, I took the anger management. Uh, I know I'm bouncing around here, but it all made, it all no, makes sense. I okay. um, uh, did the anger management, um, had the charges dropped, right? But I was still, ca- they still keep you. Here's what they don't tell you. They still keep you in the system because, you know, it, you, it was a violent crime and you suffer from mental illness. So you get flagged for a bunch of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. They make sure they keep You're a record of you. Now. Yeah, exactly. You're profiled now. So um, so I was homeless and I'm calling up everybody that I know. Burning bridges left and right. Because it's just like every, you know, the mentality that, you know, you have when you're out there is just like the world's going to end any fucking second. So, you know, everything's disposable. People are, you know, you just, you're trying to make it through, right? Yeah. So I call my friend uh, who I had from high school, you know, the, the, the thugged out looking kid. Um, and uh, I was just like, hey, listen, I have no place to stay. Can I come to your house? He's like, yeah, I live in Yonkers. If you could get up here, sure, you could stay with me for a few nights. So I'm like, great. Go up there, uh, go into his house, and he has a pen for breeding dogs, right? And he has a pit bull, right? And I go to pet the dog. He's like, yeah, you can't pet the dog. I'm like, why not? <laughs> Dog needs to know who its master is, right? That's so sad and scary. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, red flag number one. I know nothing about pit bulls. Oh. Nothing. Okay. I know nothing about this whole thing. Okay. Now, this is Yonkers, New York. This is in the 90s. Everybody listens to DMX and the Rough Riders, you know? <laughs> and like, what they didn't know was that that X was going to give it to you. Yeah, X was going <laughs> to give it to you. And like, when he, talk, when he talks about, like, you know, dogs and he's barking in his songs, like, one of the things that was, like, a hobby, quote-unquote hobby, was dog fighting, right? DMX? Yes. DMX, matter of fact, there was a company that made, like, uh, like couture clothes for dogs, and they wanted DMX to sponsor them because he always talks about dogs in his song, and they found out after the fact that the reason why was because he was fighting dogs. Ew. Yeah. So... 
And that's what these kids did up there. That was just like their he thing. He went to jail for tax evasion, didn't he? Yes, yeah, so he did go to jail for tax evasion. Oh, man, he maybe all, we could get him on the podcast. <laughs> we should get him on the podcast. No, that would no, be I'm interesting. <laughs> also suffers from extreme bipolar disorder. Like he, when people are like, I'm bipolar. No, you're moody. He's bipolar. There's a difference. Okay. Margot Kidder was bipolar. There's, you know, Jim Carrey, bipolar. Um, Derek Strong, bipolar. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm just putting myself in with the celebrities of insanity. Um, okay. So I'm at his house and like, and, and by the way, for anybody out there who's going to judge me for staying with somebody who is breeding and fighting pit bulls, look, man. You came man, you were 19 and you were homeless. I was 19 and homeless. Okay, don't high road me and be like, oh, I wouldn't have stayed there. Okay, good. And you fucking freeze and starve <laughs> in the fucking streets. By the way, oh, that's another side thing. I actually gained weight while I was homeless. Well, because you were probably eating so much junk food. Yeah, I was just eating terribly. So, and I, sl- I was able to figure out how to like sleep on cue. Like I was. Yeah, yeah. I can do that too. I, I can't do it anymore. I wish I could. Yeah. Oh my god. No, I can fall asleep literally anywhere. That's awesome. I can fall asleep in, in like a park bench. Yeah. Well, that's an exact, that's that's what trained me for. On a concrete sleep on floor a in a corner with the lights on. You yeah. know, I'm yeah. fine. That's good. good yeah. Night. It's just like good night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you around. God, I miss having that skill. Yeah, uh, that's something too. People that misconstrue is that like, what do you mean by homeless? Like, no, I didn't, I I did stay on people's couches, but I was also like street bound, full on homeless. So I'm at this kid's house. Uh, two months into being homeless, I'm at his house. Uh, you know, he's breeding pit bulls, and by the way, he starts telling me all about like pit bull breeding. Like, I I got the novices class in this. It's like Jesus Christ, like. And you, you ever had somebody tell you something that's just completely awful and because they're feeding you and housing you, you're just like, oh yeah, that's so interesting. Like you're yeah, engaged you're in conversation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So you know what that's like. Um, yeah. Bees grandparents, they know about all about the uh, pit bull dog fighting. No, no but they're, they're like Republicans and they're like racist, oh, you know? Oh, yeah, so like, like my uncle, yeah, yeah, where I'm sitting like, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good for you guys. Yeah, like, no, you're just like, please don't ever speak in public. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can, it, This is your house. I, I will. Like you're wrong about everything, everything you've ever thought in your whole life, but like, yeah. you know what I mean? Just like, don't go outside. Yeah. You know what I just mean? don't ever interact with anybody ever. Yeah. Just please don't. Yeah, you're better off alone. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> by the way, that's something I've noticed is like a common trend is just like people who are that far like right wing racist, like they live in very like cul de sac like small communities at best. They only talk to like a certain amount of people. They really they have, have their no, own circle for yeah. sure. And it's like a, a very small one that I notice, and it's very secluded from the world. Like they intentionally, yeah. Though, oh you know? yeah. Oh yeah. Because it's all it's about like separateness and yeah. like the other. You know. Yeah, and it's just like wow. It's just like you guys. You guys are choosing to be, but like you're choosing. Like it's a lifestyle choice. It's exactly what it is. Um, fucking, that's a mental illness. Well, yeah. In my you opinion, are, yeah. just you like say a so. more accepted one. Yeah, like, by far. But it's certainly so inedible. sick and weird. Yeah, it's social, social. You know. Yeah. You know. And, hey, look. As long as they don't do anything. Anyway. Um, dog breeder. Dog breeder. So dog breeder, not the not the kind of dog breeder that's showing at Westminster. That's, uh, <laughs> that's certainly not that kind of dog breeder. Um, so I'm at his house and he has this brilliant idea. You know those uh, free, uh, you know, the, the free newspaper, like, you know, stands that you see out on the street. They have like the little door on it and you take yeah. like the free paper. Yeah. So he wanted to steal one of these to turn into a speaker. Right. Interesting. Yeah, I know. I, that's like, I mean, it uh, sounds like an interesting idea, but it also sounds like you could just like have a stand. Yeah, you could, there's the easier thing. ways to, yeah. to do this. He wanted to steal one, right? So we wait for his brother to come by. His brother has a pair of bolt cutters because obviously these things are chained to the light po- lamp posts. Right, uh, so people don't steal them. Exactly. Exactly. To, to stop people from doing exactly what we're doing. Pop the pop the chain. We bet we try to get into the trunk of his car. There were detectives monitoring this whole thing right across the street, and I knew oh, that. Why? We, okay, so the reason why is I know that I know for a fact when he was in high school, he got arrested for some dirty shit, right? What kind and he, of dirty shit? Okay, so he. My understanding was that he was selling those officers of discipline. I was telling you about. He was selling drugs to them that they were then selling to people outside of the school. 
Right. Okay. Okay. And uh, so he got That's arrested scandalous. for that. Yeah, I was gonna say like he and his he had his whole family like cooking up drugs with him. Like yeah, it was crazy. So I don't know how much of that was just hype or whatever, but he went, he was in jail in Yonkers for like six months. Oh, and damn. Then, yeah. So, and then when he came out, it was weird. Like he had all these bald patches on his head. Like what happened to you? Like he definitely looked like he Jail's went through rough. some shit. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Like we, like, and nobody really knew about it except like his, like me and like two other kids. Like everybody was just like, oh, we didn't see you for a few months. Like they didn't know why. Right. So clearly he was just being monitored just randomly like they just were paying attention to everything this kid was doing so they you know they blast the siren turn around stop the car I and mean, we didn't really get it started so um you know but they made sure they went in front of us they come out and they check our ids right and i fortunately had an idea it's one thing you should have if you're homeless for god's sake make sure you have an id with you you that's will get hard. carded all the fucking time that's hard to do like yeah. where's you know, 20 dollars oh, in an address you yeah. know yeah so exactly um so i gave them my id my id got flagged uh because the, the uh the warrant that was issued that never got fully cleared because i'm a crazy person who oh, yeah fuck. so they bring me into central booking in yonkers they left me in a holding cell for four hours, handcuffed with the handcuffs behind my back the entire time. There's nobody else in the holding cell. Okay, oh there's God. no reason for me to be handcuffed this time, right? Uh, Did you ask them to take it off, and they oh, just all wouldn't? the time they just kept walking <gasps> past? Yeah. Wow, what the fuck? Yeah, so that was just brutal. That was just, and it's it's like after I think mean, you know, larger guy, you know, that's not really the most comfortable thing to be in for no, that many that's hours. So uncomfortable it's uncomfortable to be like that for 10 minutes for 10 minutes yeah so it was you know and then like you know they were just like how was i supposed to piss like you know all, there was all sorts of practical reasons why this is a bad idea you know what if there was some like, medical thing that was happening with me they told me that the reason why uh they picked me up was because a woman on the other side of town got attacked by somebody matching my description jesus christ yeah so you know that just goes to don't have mental illness, don't be homeless, and don't have an assault charge that got dropped uh, a year or so prior. Well, you, you could know? have all of those things, just like don't be poor. Yeah, don't and don't be poor. Yeah, that's the other one. Yeah, you're right. If you have all those other things, but you know you're you have, you have someone, money. Yeah, you can get out of anything. You can get out of, and I've seen it too. Yeah, I've seen Me too. it. Oh, isn't that, it doesn't just stab you in just like an interesting place, like not even in the heart. A couple I, of interesting places. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, if you have some money, you can get away with a lot of shit. Everything. Yeah. Anything. Everything. Yeah. Which is, uh, you know what I found funny here too with, uh, in regards to being homeless. So in New York, you know, you sleep on the trains a lot, right? Um, well, the one would because it's warm, mm -hmm. fairly warm. You know, cops don't stand for that shit in New York. They see you, they instantly wake you up, you know, they they make sure you get off the train. Um, Damn, that's rough. They don't yeah. do that here like that. No, they don't. I've taken the red line at three in the morning. It becomes yeah. a shelter. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah just, all the time. And just people stretched out. And I'm like, wow, okay, Chicago's loose when it comes to this. Yeah, right. the red line and the green line, too. Yeah, completely just, wow. All, right. all night long. All night long. Mm -hmm. That's what it becomes. So that was that time that I got arrested. Um, you know, I like how that's the smallest part of everything that we talked about. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just. And well, and then what happened after the four hours? After the four hours, they let me go, but they just let me leave. Like I, I had no money to call anybody or anything like that. So they just let me leave, and I had to like find my way through Yonkers, a city that I didn't know. Oh my um, god! Yeah, to try to find my friend, and then. He gave me a ride to the border of the Yon Yonkers and the Bronx are like right next to each other. Like basically Yonkers is like the North Bronx. So I was able to get there and, you know, uh, hopped the turnstile, got on the one train and then went back to the city. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, it was an interesting ex little experience there. I mean, That's so crazy because this is during a time when you like didn't have a smartphone. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like how the, I can't even imagine no that. Like GTS, how the fuck do you yeah. find anything? The, we use the stars, you know, <laughs> like, like Magellan. That's how we did it back in the 90s. That's how we yeah, did it. Yeah, we must have though. You know. Yeah, man. It was, uh, it was definitely an interesting time. I mean, just, oh, man. just going back to it, it's. You know, everything about that makes sense in context. It's just like, of course, all of these things would happen. Of course, I would pick one of those derelict people to hang out with who has a place to stay. 
And of course, he wants to do some stupid shit. And of course, you What's know. What's funny is that you get busted. Of course. Because you know they mean? didn't get busted for anything. They no. were just like, whatever. And I think he got, did he get it? I don't even know if he got a citation or come see the judge at a later date. No, I'm the one who went, got taken to in jail. that day. Yeah. And to like, jail. just really like tortured for four hours. Yeah. That's really what it for was. For no good reason. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just like, oh, well, we thought you may have hit the guy. Well, it's just like you saw where I was, okay? Yeah. You're saying this is on the other side of town. I'm. What do you think I do, ran? Like, I don't yeah. understand. Like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, what, did you think God. my friends drove me to beat up an old lady randomly? <laughs> and then we decided to, come on, guys, what are you doing? Oh, my God. Doing your job, so. Can yeah, I, I got my, I, let me feed you every night for the rest of your life. Okay? Oh, that would be great. Yeah, I mean, I got I got my balls broken by cops because of that charge for years after that. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like I would randomly just be like this. Oh yeah, you have to come to court. So so date why? Because of this charge. Uh, yeah, that's been adjudicated. Like I don't understand what I'm being. It's so crazy how like something like that can happen, and then yeah. it's like. Everything is supposedly fine, but like yeah. someone doesn't put like the right piece of paper into the right pile. Yeah. And then like for the next however long years of your life, if you want to even go about getting that fixed, it's a huge long like headache for you. Absolutely. But it was just like someone's fucking like dumb mistake. Yeah. Like they, and it's just like, it was just like, oh, okay. It's like they ordered the wrong coffee. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, that was another one of those types of mistakes for them. Yeah. Oh God. That breaks mm-hmm. my heart. It just like, it sucks. What a waste. Yeah. Of time and oh my god and by the way every level of the system when you're poor is like that when people are just like oh people who are getting welfare and food stamps and all that because i you know was on welfare food stamps for several years of my life like if you think that that's like a free ride you are out of your fucking mind to yeah. get on that and maintain that is no no it's they that's you, a the, job in and of itself it is a job in and of itself it's you know, and uh, and people treat it like a job sometimes yeah. too. I mean, it's and the threshold between being able to afford to live without any benefits and uh, with them, it's just like there's there's such a, a huge margin of okay, there's no way I can make ends meet and in that's New York. It. You you've been so good since then. Oh yeah, it's been yeah. like the next twenty years just being chill. Yeah, well, <laughs> chill. I was doing a lot of work on my brain psychologically. I spent my 20s, my entire 20s, just getting my head right. So, Damn, well, you did a great job, man. Oh, thank you. Props to you. You Appreciate are it. amazing. You're oh, such a cool person. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Likewise. Likewise. Thanks. You know, thanks. You're not supposed to be as chill as you are. You realize that, given your background. You like, too, though, dude. Like, how, how have you not killed, like, four people? People ask me that all the time. Well, like, yeah, no one knows Actually, no one knows. <laughs> Right. I'm still waiting for that text. Like, by the way, we need, I need your help with something. What's that? <laughs> well, <laughs> got a little bit of a body situation, if you know what I mean. No, and, I just am really good with DNA. Oh, you yeah. Know what I mean? That's right. Cause you're smart. That's yeah. right. I remember you, you got the old thinker going on there. That's right. right. I know like 35 different ways to poison someone undetected. It's good. Can't wait to come over for dinner again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hopefully. I would never have a reason to poison you, right? <laughs> <laughs> now you wouldn't. So I'm going to just delete a few text messages here. I don't know. Tell me about your show because I want to come. Uh, okay, and you, th- so and you said I, yeah, I could have a free ticket. You could have a free ticket. Um, I want to send the I don't front even know row. Any I want to get you flowers. Absolutely. What's oh, your favorite kind great. of flower? Um, I don't know the difference between flowers. Sunflowers I, it is. Sunflowers it is. I know sunflowers because, you know, they're big. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so my show is called Midlife Crisis, a comedy show. It's going to be at the Playground Theater on March 9th. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Uh, 6.30 start time for the show. We have a bunch of great performers. It's not going to be all stand-up. We have uh, about five stand-ups. We have a musical act. We have a sketch act. And we have an improv act. And it's BYOB. It's BYOB. Um, I am thinking about serving uh, coffee and tea because it's for middle-aged people. Aww. Uh, and uh, fiber bars. So, <laughs> But I don't know if we're going to actually do that. Um, I love that. That's yeah, a great idea. I was thinking about doing that and putting the logo with stickers on the fiber bars. You know, I think, you know, that'll be, that'll be a treat. So that's March 9th. Um, and and? Then, and every week. Every Friday. Every Friday, you can see me and B. And me. Yes. And you. And Raza Joffrey. And we host the Strong Style Open Mic. That's at Driftwood. And that's on... 6 uh, p.m. 6 p.m. is the sign-up. 6.30 is the mic. 10.21 
West Montrose. 1021 West Mont. Thank you for reading. I, I have no, I have to look up the address every single That's time. That's the address. 1021 West, West Montrose. That is it. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. 1021 West Montrose. Come there. And by the way, if you do come, understand that you can say whatever you want at the mic. Uh, you know, you, you, again, as long as I approve of it and which I'm going to approve of everything, as long as B <laughs> approves of it, she really doesn't give a fuck. I can't stress that enough. The level of lack of fuck giving <laughs> this young lady has, you know, um, oh, and if the bartender, if Melissa doesn't like it, well, obviously it's her house. So, you know, you got to be respectful of that. Other than that, you know, come by, you know, sling some fucking yuck yucks, guys. You know, <laughs> throw some jokes out there. And then, yeah. Come if you dare. Yeah, come if you dare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ho- and hope beyond hope that you are on my part of the list or Raza's. Because if you're on B's and she don't like it, you're fucked. Mm. <laughs> you are fucked. Anyhow. Yeah. Oh, tell me what your socials are. Dark strongest at Instagram and because there's other dark strongs, but they aren't the strongest. And no, don't act the God I gotta change that. It's Dark Strong 5074 <laughs> at Facebook. And that's how you can reach me. Um oh oh yeah, you could also look up and I started this. I haven't done anything with it yet, but you could also find me at uh on Facebook, Psych Ward Comedy. Oh hey, I like that. Yeah, Psych Ward Comedy. That's gonna be like my like label. So like, you know, the strong style open mic's gonna be under that midlife crisis. If I do a podcast, it's gonna be under uh Psych Ward Comedy. Fuck yeah. So yeah. Do a podcast, dude. Kind of gotta do a podcast. I, I want you to I, do I one. I kind of dig this. I, I dig. I dig Aaron. I, this is this yeah, is cool. This, this is, is if vibes. I'm doing a podcast, it's here vibes. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Vibes. Vibes. That's what it's all about. It's all about <laughs> vibes, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's vibes. all about vibes. We're all about vibes here. Well, so. thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I love you. Oh, this is great. I'll I, see I you had for a great dinner tomorrow here. night. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. I look forward to coming by. Bon voyage. Bon voyage.